So there's this thing I used to do on Instagram quite a lot where if I ever got a comment from someone saying, oh my God, body goals, or I wish I had your body, I used to slide into their DMs with a really unflattering photo of myself. <laughs> and full disclosure here, guys, I'm not that photogenic. It takes a lot of effort for me to get a good photo of myself. I spoke all about this in my last video. So I do have quite a few unflattering pictures of myself. I never, ever want anyone to compare themselves negatively to me. Last week, I put up a video explaining to you guys why you will never, ever, 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 ever look like an influencer no matter how hard you try. Because as we learned in the last video, even influencers don't look like influencers because that level of perfection does not exist. I had a lot of comments from people being like, oh my God, Steph, like you really roasted yourself in that video. Like, do you have no pride? <laughs> and I assure you guys, I do have pride. Like I want to look good online just as much as anybody else does. However, I also don't mind hurting my pride or looking less than flattering online online if it means that somebody watching me is going to feel better about themselves. Now if you watched my last video on influencers and why you will never ever look like them, you might notice that I completely didn't discuss body image, anything to do with bodies at all to be honest, in that video. And I did that intentionally because I think that body image online deserves an entire video just on it because body image on social media is a minefield. I've recently started stalking a few Instagram accounts that I find to be super eye-opening. So if you guys haven't checked them out yet, here's a little snapshot of them. So the first one is Beauty False. And if you have a little scroll through there, they put side-by-side -side images of celebrities and influencers, candid shots versus like the posed shot. So like what the influencer or celebrity actually looks like compared to what they look like online. And then the other one, which I originally found, which I thought was amazing, Celeb Face. And this account does the same thing. So it puts side-by-side -side images of famous people, candid shots versus what they look like online. But they also do super up-close images of famous people where you can actually see that they've got like skin texture and paws and like a pimple here and there. Kind of just images that prove that these famous people that we look up to and compare ourselves negatively to are actually real people with real imperfections and flaws as well. So as I was flicking through these Instagram accounts, it came to my attention that these influencers and celebrities that we hold in such high regard and we all consider to be so perfect looking are number one, regular humans as well with cellulite and rolls and bloating and pores and skin texture and pimples, which by the way is nothing to be ashamed of, that is part of being a human, but that these influencers and celebrities are also insecure in themselves. Take a look at this picture of Madison B for example, absolutely beautiful girl in both pictures, let's be real here. On the right, that's a Getty Images picture, so she hasn't been able to edit that one or tweak it at all, that's what she actually looks like. And then on the left, I'm guessing this was the image that she posted to her own Instagram. The picture on the right, she looks beautiful, but she looks like a human, you know, she's got a waist and inside that waist she has some organs. Whereas in the picture on the left, which I'm guessing she tweaked and posted herself, she has cinched in her waist to within an inch of its life and honestly I don't know where her internal organs have gone. And this is a really worrying thing that I find on so many famous people and influencers accounts is that they have cinched in their waists to be about this big and then you've got young girls and young boys looking at these images wondering why their waist is big enough to fit their internal organs. And it's not just Madison Beer who's done this. This is Kylie Jenner. This is Alexis Wren. So many of these beautiful young influencers who are already very thin in real life also feel that insecurity to take it one step further and cinch that waist in just that little bit more. There's a reason that in the Victorian era, women wore corsets. So a corset would be put around the woman's waist and then using whale bones or something similar, this corset would literally be pulled and tightened so that the woman's organs would either go up or down and the waist would look super little. As you can imagine, not only was that probably very uncomfortable for the woman, but it was also no good for their health. In your abdomen area, you have to house your intestines, your stomach, your colon, your spleen, your reproductive organs. If your waist was this big, where on earth are all your organs? And then you've got this picture of Wolfie Cindy, for example. Wolfie Cindy, again, beautiful girl. The pictures on the left is the pictures that she has posted of herself, and then the pictures on the right are pictures that 
I'm guessing she hasn't been where we're being taken. The pictures on the left, she is clearly sucking in. There may be a bit of editing going on there. I don't know, there may not. She's in great lighting. She knows her angles and she looks like a typical influencer. Whereas the pictures on the right, you can see that she looks like a typical normal girl. And that's my whole point. You see guys, there's no point putting these influencers or celebrities up on a pedestal thinking that you can never achieve looking like that or that you are somehow lesser than them because you don't look like that because they actually don't look like that either. They they actually look like regular normal girls as well. And in their normal natural state, like these pictures on the right of Wolfie Cindy, she looks bloody awesome. Hi guys, okay, so we've relocated to my wardrobe. Please ignore the fact that I desperately need to clean my mirror. Now, if you guys remember in the last video, we spoke loads about like angles and lighting and how they make a huge difference with how you look in photos. I'm gonna demonstrate that to you here now. So if I lean back like this and suck in for dear life, I can take a pretty flattering picture. If, however, I breathe out and undo my pants that are kind of holding the rest of my abdomen in, then suddenly my waist looks drastically different. Now, I assure you, when I'm sat in the lounge with my fiancé and my son, I'm not sat in the lounge like this trying to make myself look Instagram friendly. I'll be sat like this, relaxed, comfortable, and not arching myself into ridiculous shapes trying to get a good picture. These shorts, to their credit, are super flattering, and I love them for that. But I'm going to take them off, and I'm going to give the phone to Darren, and he's going to record what my bum actually looks like. YouTube, please don't demonetize me. So we are now in daylight. Daylight for the most part is not particularly flattering. So that's why when like Instagram models have photo shoots, they are in studio lighting and they have professional photographers taking their pictures to make them look good. So my Instagram probably makes it look like I'm super toned. But as you guys can see in the harsh light of day, I'm absolutely not. If I walk, I, if I breathe, if I jump, I wobble. So like, I'm definitely not as toned as what my pictures would probably make it look like I am. And that's okay. Like, I have no problem with that. I'm pretty happy with my body. Now, here's a great example. So see these two pictures? These are pictures that I posted on my Instagram a couple of years ago when I was still living in Australia and blonde. Yes, this is me. <laughs> the picture on the left and the picture on the right were taken at the exact same time on the exact same day, but they're both in different lighting. The picture on the left, I'm actually posing for and kind of angling myself in a way that I know will make my body look better. And on the right, I was mid walking. So I was kind of wobbling whilst I walk and that's what I actually look like actually moving because whilst I can look like the picture on the left if I contort my body in a certain way and I'm super posed and in super good lighting what I actually look like is the picture on the right now just as a little side note I just want to reiterate to you the massive difference that lighting makes so that was me out in like normal daylight right now this is the same body the same bum the same shorts but this lighting is a lot more flattering and you can't see any of my cellulite or like my dimples um, or anything like that. So this lighting makes my skin look so much smoother than it actually is in real life. That's why when you see like a paparazzi picture or a picture that the Instagram model wasn't like ready to be taken, they look drastically different to a picture that they have been in control of, been posing for gotten their angles right, gotten the lighting right, and then possibly even edited. But in one picture, they look like unattainably perfect. And in the other picture, they look like a regular human. Now, conventional media and social media tell us that there's only one type of body that is considered beautiful. But if you take a look through history, you'll notice that over time, there are trends of what is actually considered to be the perfect body. And remember, trends change. So whatever is in fashion right now for your body to look like, in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years time, it's not gonna be the same. What is body goals right now tends to be ridiculously thin but with large hips and a big bum and big boobs whereas five years ago having a body like Kim Kardashian was all the rage and five years before that the era of the it girls with Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie being a size zero was all the rage and having no curves but being super super stick thin. So if you look at it like that there really is no body goals because what is body goals is changing all the time. So there's absolutely no point in like a naturally tall Amazonian curvy woman starving herself to be a size zero or a naturally thin petite woman getting butt implants to look like Kim Kardashian. We all have different genetics and we're all supposed to look different. So don't waste your precious time on this earth punishing your body into looking like something that it was never meant to look like in the first place. The beauty standards that are being portrayed in conventional media and social media have gone so far off the Richter scale that nobody can actually reach these beauty standards. Not us, 
not normal people, not influencers, and not celebrities either, because literally nobody looks like that in real life. So to conclude this rambling video, if you find yourself comparing yourself negatively to people that you see on social media, stop yourself. Remember that you don't look like that and neither do they. None of us actually reach the beauty standards that are being set for us. So if you don't meet those beauty standards, you're not the only one, we don't meet them either. Remember guys, your body is literally just a vessel in which to house your spirit. <laughs> Respect it, but don't obsess over it. I love you guys, guys. If you want me to do more videos like this in the future, give this one a thumbs up so I know you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you on my next one. Bye!